Hi friends, I'm Katie. And I'm Lauren. And welcome to OK, But Did You Know? A podcast where we talk about the TV and media that we love with a friend who's never seen it before. Today we're recapping and chatting about Bob's Burgers Season 4, Episode 5, Turkey in a Can, and Episode 6, Purple Rain Union. We always start off with a synopsis, so here is your turkey in a can. It's Thanksgiving. Bob is prepping his three-day brine on his turkey. Gail and her cats are staying for the week. Tina is trying to prove she's old enough to sit at the adult's table. Jean, Linda, and Gail work on writing a Thanksgiving song. The family wakes up to the turkey in the toilet, and no one seems to know who's putting it there. Bob gets more turkeys, and they all end up in the toilet. Louise investigates the crime to clear her name, and Tina unsuccessfully convinces her parents she's ready for the adult's table. In the end, Bob cooks his turkey, and the family discovers he is the culprit. The allergy pills he takes because of Gail's cats causes him to sleepwalk, and he is struggling with Tina growing up too fast and is potty training the turkey in his sleep, inevitably dropping it into the toilet. Yep. Yep. (laughs) You remind me of Linda right now. Um, So we always start off with the puns, and so what did you get for the vacant storefront? Dr. Rangelove's Stove Store. That's from the movie, the Stanley Kubrick movie, Dr. Strange Love or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. Mm-hmm. I don't know why the wiki is telling us that the leaves are orange, but like with the, the floating timeline, I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, are we in fall? But then it's turkey, so I hope so. Like, I mean, it's Thanksgiving, it's Thanksgiving. so it makes sense. It's just funny how they tend to, they, they have the tiniest changes sometimes. That, yeah. But I love yeah. the wiki, like, they, they pick up on these. A uh, pest control truck. Oh, no, you rodent exterminators. Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, no, you didn't. Okay. Burger of the day. I didn't see one. So. I saw. Okay, wait. I saw the bottom of one. I saw it comes with squash and ham. I didn't see the top of it. This though. is probably one of my favorite burgers of the day. The wiki has it for us because you can't. It okay. doesn't fully appear on the screen, so it's really hard to see. Mm-hmm. It's. Gordon Hamsey burger. It comes with squash and ham. Oh, so that's so it's good. It's like Gord, G-O-U-R-D-O-N, Gordon mm-hmm. Hamsey. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you couldn't even see it. Like, I know, it's, it's so, so good. good. Um, so yeah, turkey in a can. This is the first time we see Bob give a pun to a creation other than a burger because this is the father of mm-hmm. the brine. Uh, because he's yep. uh, which salt brines. I'm not going to go into the explanation of salt brines because there's different ways of doing them. He looked like he was doing a liquid one more so. Do you? I I did write down. I'm like, is three days of brining worth it? Or for I, mostly um, what I've seen is like overnight. So usually most brines I've seen because you have like a wet brine or a dry brine. Dry brine is usually just like salt and whatever herbs on dry meat, mm-hmm. and then of course okay. wet is like usually with like an oil and something else. Um, yeah. So with something as large as a turkey, I think three days does make sense. A lot of people will do a wet okay. brine though and actually have it like in a bag, kind of like a marinade, but like brining. It's it's yeah. different brine and marinade. There's like different science like science with it. Well, yeah, because because brining is more meant. It's meant to like draw mm-hmm. out the moisture, so you also have crispier skin, but also imbue like the meat with exactly. As well. Um, so I think with something as large as a turkey, it would work because it's so large. It takes more time for everything to do, like the actual process. For something like a chicken yeah. breast, yeah, I would just probably throw in your do your brine the night be- the night before or the even the morning of if you're gonna cook it for dinner, you know. Yeah, I would say yeah for a chicken breast, like for a salt brine, you could probably do like two hours. You probably could. So with this, like yeah, I think with the size of the turkey, because he's also not just feeding his their family of five they've got gail they've got mort and teddy all coming too so Mm -hmm. it's a lot more people so that big of a turkey i think three days would work even though he didn't get his full three days with five turkeys this is true this is um the first episode that they mentioned gail's love of quantum leap and scott bakula later in the show you get to see a very like a wonderful episode all about pretty much Gail's love for Scott Bakula. Okay. You're welcome in advance. Thank um, you. And it was five turkeys, and all five end up being into the either the apartment's toilet or the restaurant's toilet downstairs. Um, mm-hmm. But my favorite part of this episode, because I love, I love this episode. It's, it's one of my favorites. I will explain, of course. 
But this is one of the ones that we get to see more of Bob's bisexual identity. Yeah, I wrote that down. Bob saying he's mostly straight. I wrote down pretty much like the entire interaction by line Mm -hmm. because it's so good. I probably can't act as well as you can with the way you do your lines, but I have it all. Um, Because we our other examples are, of course, from like Sacred Cow um, when he makes out with a steer. Uh, God, it's it's like when I say things like that, that I'm like, this is my favorite show. (laughs) Like, okay. Like we both say weird things. I today for our, for our synopsis mentioned the daughter of Snow White and Captain Hook climb a beanstalk to get a magical compass from a giant. Yeah. That used to make portal beans. sleeping powder. That used to make magic beans that made portals so they can get back to Storybrooke and stop Cora from destroying like there's there's a lot of weird stuff we gotta say for this podcast. Um, but I didn't realize the the wiki points out with synchronized swimming, it's not just it's not Bob uh fantasizing about Linda fantasizing about Tom Selleck. It's Bob's fan is a fantasy mm-hmm. and Tom Selleck's yeah. in it. So that's another yeah. proof of like, hey, um, which goes to the line though, through this of him, like at the end of every like at that one point he says uh, no, maybe, wait, I'm straight. I mean, I'm mostly straight. <laughs> like, and there's some speculation from some fans that are like, oh, that's just him, like, bantering. He's not actually. I'm like, no. The way this whole interaction is just very much proof that Bob is bi. Mm-hmm. Like, point blank. And it makes me it's so the, freaking happy. It's the beauty of, you know, fan interaction and fan analysis and interpretation. No one's right or wrong. It's I'm right. Just every, everyone <laughs> has their interpretation. Yeah. Um, but I have lots of random notes. Of course, I also have the entirety of, you know, like that portion of the uh-huh. script because I yeah. love it so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what did you think? So I liked this one. Oh, I thank God. I, 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 like, <laughs> I, I, I like messing with you. <laughs> um, I did write down, well, I wrote my thing about uh, brining, does brining it for three days do anything? Uh, but I wrote down, when he says no one sings Thanksgiving songs, then I put in all caps, pass the cranberry sauce for half and mashed potatoes. You remembered it. I have I have it on one of my playlists on, on Spotify. Well, now you get to add Gravy Boat. Okay, yes, I do. Uh, but I was like, someone sings Thanksgiving songs. I would prefer, I wrote that I would prefer Thanksgiving songs to two months of Christmas songs, personally. I will be honest. I'm okay with the two months of Christmas songs. And I am I also, again, we said I'm a Jew. So like, it doesn't matter. I think it's fun though. <laughs> oh my God. I like Christmas music. Uh, I used to work in restaurants. So mm. yeah. There was one time. So I think we've, we've already mentioned before. My birthday is the day before Halloween. Yeah. So one day I was, I used to work not too far from one of the malls in my mm-hmm. area. And so I left work. Uh, I, I took a half day on my birthday and I went, I stopped at the mall on my way home to just kind of walk around and like, you know, use some birthday coupons. And they had already started playing Christmas music the day before Halloween. And what's even, I mean, it's sad that they did that, but also I was walking towards the hot topic. All of a sudden I saw one of the employees walk out in her Halloween costume, but she walked out of the store, yelled out into the ether. It's not even Halloween yet. And then walked back into the store. I love her. And like I walked right in after that. I'm like, I appreciate you. Found my true love. Oh my god. <laughs> that random hot topic employee. That random hot topic employee. Because I get so angry when I start seeing Christmas shit and I'm still picking out the kids' Halloween costumes. Like, mm-hmm. what that no. Wait until Give after me Halloween. Halloween. Wait until after Halloween. Then like like the, I think the the joke one time was some like a like a Lowe's or a Walmart already had Christmas stuff out like mid October. And my mom texted me pictures. She went, apparently your birthday happened already. Happy birthday. But as a joke, it was like a few weeks beforehand. But it's yeah. like, that's what it feels like. So we've just jumped over Halloween. Well, that's like, we had, Christmas had not even happened yet. It was pre-December 25th, 2023. And my Walmart had Valentine's out. I was like, what my, are you doing? My Target one year had back to school before the school year had ended. Like our, our what school year. What are these year, companies it, doing? I don't know. My area school ends, you know, mid, like, I, I just, just before the end of June, mm-hmm. it was easily mid June finals for the high school. were still going on. No one had moved up in grades yet. You can't have back to school. If the current year hasn't ended yet. Yeah. See for us back to school is in July because we mm-hmm. go back in August. Yeah. Which is so dumb. Cause it's the hottest month of the year for us in the South. Why are you putting our children in school when you've got cat five days every day? 
That's one thing I never understood why uh, by why warmer states go back to school sooner. I don't know why we do. I think it's really dumb. I think we should go back like around 1st of September because August is our hottest month of the year. Mm-hmm. And the and then half the time the schools down here the ACs don't work. Yeah. Because they've been shut off for two months, two months. And mm-hmm. so they'll try and run them back up. You can't do that with an AC unit that often. No. And so yeah, they yeah. will. So we end in May and we start in August. We don't we do that. Homeschool. I'm homeschooled. I'm like, mm-hmm. no, we take like three months off and only do the yeah. re- like rest of the time. And then I take like a month in like the winter off as well. Like we take a lot of breaks. Yeah. But it works. That's but all she's that passing matter. tests. That's all I know. Yeah. But I get really annoyed with that. So that's why. But for me with the restaurant thing, like I worked in restaurants so much. Two months of nonstop Christmas music because that's what has to be played at that time of mm-hmm. year. I am not a fan of Christmas music. I'll listen to it in December. That's a mm-hmm. pass. I will let my kids at least start watching Christmas movies in, in, in November. Mm-hmm. That's my limit. <laughs> I cannot do more than that. It drives me insane. Um, I did like Gail's line of get it out of their litter box. They're vegetarians. Cats are not vegetarians. Cats should not be vegetarians. Cats are carnivores. They are obligate carnivores. They are. Um, but her also just, uh, just the cat was just sitting on someone's porch. Yeah. Yeah. She's a cat magnet. I already know that cat's name, though, but I can't tell it. I want you to be surprised when it comes. Like, the one she picks up, I was like, I know that one's name. Okay. He has his own episode. Good to know. I was watching Tina the whole time. I was, like, trying to, like, be older. I mean, to be fair, like, when she wore the pantyhose and, like, whatever, I'm like, she does kind of look like an elementary school secretary, the way that she's dressed. But when she... When she fell down in the in the shoes, my my first thought was that's that. Uh, I mean, it's a t- it's a TikTok sound, but it's also it's from Mean Girls the musical. I think it was like, this is modern feminism talking. Watch me as I run the world in shoes I cannot walk in. Which I have yet to see the movie, so I'm curious. I have. It. I've heard a lot of mixed things on it. It's fine. I think it misses what the original movie was as well as the Broadway show and what like I I cuz I think the Broadway show I think obviously they they cut out a lot of songs mm-hmm. because the movie is an hour and a half something like well, that. They could have kept a little bit the more. The show was two The show was two and a half hours. I a lot of people don't like that they took out um both Karen and Gretchen's parts of Meet the Plastics, but without the song that leads into Meet the Plastics, their parts no longer make any sense. Gotcha. Because their parts, like the end of the song after Regina's part, where they like they start singing like "Here's Where You Belong," the song that leads into that is going through all the different clicks, saying you know "Find Where You Belong." So without that, that part doesn't make any sense. Gotcha. So the fact that it's just Regina makes perfect sense, honestly. Um, but I think it's just I think it's a fact of it's modernizing something that still seems modern in our eyes. I know it is. I know the original one is a twenty year old yeah. movie, but because it's such it's so culturally saturated and like stuff has changed in 20 years but not so much that a modernization doesn't still kind of feel like it didn't it didn't need to be there but the target audience is still us it's exactly the target audience isn't teenagers the target audience is the target audience is the people that saw it in theaters when it came out in 2004 exactly and that's millennials like it's so culturally saturated and like you you can have very successful movies based on a musical Mm -hmm. based on a movie look at hairspray but the difference is the original Hairspray movie was not culturally saturated. Like, people weren't watching it all the time. It came out in, like, I think the mid-late 80s. Yeah. I'm going to go with people didn't really know about it prior to the stage musical, like, in our generation. Because, like, with streaming, and it, 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 things can't stay alive like that. No. And then, so you have, the, you have the musical, and then you have the adaptation of the musical, which is fundamentally very different from the original movie. I don't really think Me Girls, the movie, the musical, is that fundamentally different from the original movie which isn't meant to be because it's based off of the movie but it holds it so much closer than like say the adaptation of yeah Earth, right? that's the difference i have I seen that the, the biggest complaint i've seen is the casting of katie yeah i think they could have gone with a different person i think she does she does really well with the acting the singing it's the, singing the singing is not there but fun fact uh the woman who voices charlie in husband hotel was the original katie on broadway I did see that, and now, like, I, I of course, have not seen anything Broadway other than, like, what I have access mm-hmm. to, which is Hamilton. Um, if I lived closer, yeah, I'd see everything. My God, like, it, I would, I, my biggest ones I really want to see right now is I want to see Hades Town. Mm-hmm. I wish I could have seen Beetlejuice in its prime. 
and uh oh my god i just had it in my brain mm. wicked yeah. i've never i've i have i have almost no knowledge on wicked which is probably blasphemy for you but i know nothing okay. about wicked i would like to see wicked again it makes me sad i would like that wicked's one of those shows it's like i saw that when i was like 10 i would like to see it again as an adult mm. that's fair i did get to see rent mm. though when they nice. were touring they were here for one night only and i did get to see it Although uh, who, the people I went with uh, had to have a smoke break at intermission, and I missed the beginning oh, of gotcha. going in from intermission. I was so mad. I think I cussed them out a few times, and they were just like, is it that big of a deal? Yeah. And I'm like, yes, it's a yes, big it deal. Is. That is a huge it deal. Is. So I want to bring us back to Bob's Burgers off of a very completely oh, yeah. unrelated tangent, because I do have one more note that I do want to bring up. No, we started with holidays. Okay. I think this was more or less a very unrelated tangent, but either way. Um, That's fair. Throughout the entire episode, I found the reveal of it being Bob on the effects of allergy medication. I found that to be underwhelming because I was so convinced the entire time it was the cats. Well, how would the cats get it into the toilet? I don't know. It's a cartoon. There doesn't need to be logic. <laughs> okay, with this one, there needs to be a slight amount of logic? I don't know. I was convinced it was the cats. All right. I guess I'll give that to you. <laughs> um, I don't pretend to be an expert in physics. I think my favorite part, though, is I know I, I mentioned the line of like, wait, I'm straight. I mean, I'm mostly straight is actually the line of what you get that right, right there at the end of it. Um, he's like, oh, I should just I got to go cook this. Uh, also, I'm married. But if I wasn't, who am I kidding? You're out of my leave. It could never work. And then he goes, <laughs> you guys like, oh, but come back. Like said, you know, you know, all those things. And he goes, probably not. I'll call you. <laughs> like Bob ends on. Yeah. I'll call you like Bob. Which makes me think of like, what kind of flirt is Bob? Um, I'm going to go with not a very good one. I mean, the guy called him a sloppy bear. That he did. So one of the, my favorite things that I kind of take away from this episode as well, I put the picture in the script just now, but this specific screenshot of this episode <laughs> is a meme at this point. And people oh, call absolutely. it like, it, it's like a Renaissance painting when it you look be, at yeah. it. No, it it's, absolutely is. It's so amazing. Like, I would frame this. I love this screenshot. It's absolutely hilarious. But I had to, like, just bring the attention to it because I'm like, if you need to ever explain Bob's Burgers without it's this words. Screenshot. It's this it's screenshot. It's this screenshot. And it's it's phenomenal. Obviously, this will be the first picture on, like, the Instagram post. Mm-hmm. Like, this will be this picture. Yeah. It has to be. Absolutely. But I just, I had to talk about this picture because it is the screenshot. Mm-hmm. But yes. Also, what are in those allergy pills? Yeah, I don't, I don't want to know because I feel like, I mean, like allergy pills, they shouldn't cause anything no. that intense. Like I always joke and say, Benadryl is basically a sedative. It is it, actually. It is. It really is. Well, if you ever had, you IV can buy. Benadryl, yeah. If you ever had IV Benadryl, that is quite literally a sedative. Is it? I was on a medication when I was first like being put on like that level of meds. That was an infusion. And, be- and mm-hmm. the, with the way that the medication was cre- was formulated, it there there was a risk of um of some kind of like reaction because it's not entirely human proteins that it's based on. Interesting. So they're they're like, oh, so we're gonna give you IV Benadryl to combat that to hopefully you know avoid any kind of reaction. But like I'm like, th- th- for legal reasons, this is a joke. I'm I'm sure this isn't what they were doing. But like part of me was like, they're just giving us this so we fall asleep and don't complain. <laughs> you know, I could see that. I mean. Which is funny because they have some pretty interesting meds out there. Before my daughter had her first surgery, she was only 18 months old. She had trigger finger, finger, but they still have to put an 18-month-old asleep for that. Yeah. They walk in, they hand me, they they gave Autumn meds, and they're just like, oh, this is just baby Valium. Okay. My, that was the happiest I've ever seen that child in her entire <laughs> life. Baby she Valium. It was hilarious. So what did you rate Turkey in a Can? So I gave this one a nine for plot. This is chaos from beginning to end, quite frankly. Uh, I gave it a seven because I think there was just a little too much Teddy for character. That's fair. Just a little too much Teddy. Uh, mm-hmm. And I gave it an eight for personal. So this gets a 24 out of 30. Not bad. Like I said, I, I like messing with you, but like I did enjoy this episode. It's a 30. That, that I expected that. You expected a 30 for this one. Yeah. I'm sure you were watching it going, yep. Yep. This is Katie. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just refer to a screenshot of as a Renaissance painting. So yes, this true. is a 30. And I have, I don't have to explain myself because no. obviously I'm obsessed. <laughs> now let's see if you, how you feel about uh, 
Purple Rain Union. Hmm. Linda is asked to get her high school band back together for their reunion because the more successful band, Bad Hair Day, can't make it. She decides she wants to do it to prove her and her band are good and gets ba- the band back together. Uh, the band practice is chaotic with Gail as a member and Bob trying to serve customers upstairs. The night of the reunion, Bob ends up with a huge pimple on his nose and goes to great lengths uh, to hide it. Louise tries to convince the babysitter to take them to the reunion to see the band play, ending with black eyes for everyone. A group of Linda's old classmates all obsess over Bob's pimple and end up partying and getting him drunk. Bad Hair Day does show up for the reunion and plays before the Tatas, and Linda loses it. The babysitter helps Linda get back on stage, and the kids get to see the performance. That was not an easy one to explain, in all honesty. I didn't know how to, because uh, that was, um... No. It's an interesting one. There's a lot of moving parts in this one. A lot of moving parts. And I was like, I'm just gonna write what happened the best I can. Uh, But what did you get for the vacant storefront? Betty's machetes. And and the sign is a machete-shaped sign that says Mm -hmm. open. Yeah. And pest control truck. If you give a mouse a poison, exterminate. <laughs> and that's a from the children. It's just from the children's book. If you give a mouse a cookie. It is hard to say if you give a mouse a poison with it, a straight face. Like, it's not the most clever of puns, but it is very much the what the actual fuck. It really is because then you think about it and it, it you know, mice are also vermin and exterminating and it's just it's like it's so bad it's so bad but it's so good because it is funny it is funny it's like if you give a mouse a poison it won't ask for a glass of milk it, <laughs> damn so uh no burgers of the day no again no burgers of the day i wrote under burgers my my spot for burgers of the day i just wrote a mad lauren yeah I like my burgers of the day. It's a fun, it's like a scavenger hunt for me. Let's see. Like, let me, let me see something just to make you, see if I can make you feel a little bit better. Do we get burgers next week? Uh, I think you should have one next week, at least for one of the episodes. This season, like, they do kind of try and take it out of just the restaurant. Um, they bring it back a lot, honestly. They're going to come back to it. But this episode, they very much try and take everybody out of the restaurant and you get to see more of everything around them. You see the apartment more. You're gonna see the school more. Yeah. Um. There, like, uh, now I, I will say, like, ten and eleven, you're gonna, you're gonna get the restaurant for that one. Okay. But stuff like thirteen. Have you seen the title for episode thirteen? I haven't looked at it. Mazzaltina. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the thirteenth episode of the season. That's about right. <laughs> That's about right. Uh, but this one, so we've got Brooke Dillman as Stacy and Wendy Molyneux as Jen. These two uh, wonderful people have been in so much, especially with voice acting. It's hard mm-hmm. to really credit them to anything, but I wanted to at least yeah. give them credit where credit is due because they both do amazing jobs. Um, but of course, this is the title of the episode is um, off of Purple Rain, the movie with Prince. Um, if you actually look closely enough, Gail's high school locker has a picture of a cat in it. So Gail has always been obsessed with cats. That's fair. Um, she also wears the same exact outfit from 25 years prior. I mean, I said kudos to her for knowing her style. Yeah. You know? She she wore the same exact thing. Um, Teddy is in this episode, but this is the first time he doesn't speak. Mm. Because uh, he's in the restaurant while the Tatas are practicing, but oh. no speaking lines. I'm okay with that. <laughs> And it's it just a little thing. Like, you remember Linda doing the synchronized swimming DVD? Mm-hmm. The three women in Linda's fitness class are the three women seen in the prenatal yoga video. I love that. I, fi- um, I figured, but I love that. Which I love that they did. Um, yeah. But I'm excited to hear... Well, I guess I'm excited. This one was an, This is an interesting episode. Uh, but I, I'm excited to hear what you've thought of Purple Rain Union. Yeah, this one, my first uh, first one was just, I have zero desire to go to any kind of reunion to see people who aren't the people I spend time with. I wrote, I'm with like, Bob. I will not be attending school reunions. No. Like, my 10-year reunion would have been last year. I don't know if anyone did anything. I just came off of spending five days with my best friend that I've known for 20 years. Like, that's fine. I don't, I don't need to go see people from high school, like, intentionally. 
I'm okay with like if I run into someone on the street and they happen to be in town. Cool. Hi, nice to see you. No, I'm not even that. okay with that. I if I knew you in high school, I don't know you. No, that's but that's that's true though. Like if I know you in high school and I haven't seen you since, I don't know who you are anymore. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know who you are. I am. Other, other, you know my name. That might be it. I am not the same. For eight, I, I'm not 18 year old Katie. I am 30 years old. I am exactly. not that 18 year old. Exactly. I loved the line, "Don't hide your tatas under a bush." Mm. That is fair. Jean going, uh, the Roman gods are jerks. Yes, they are. I like Jean's thing of uh, the Roman gods are jerks because they are. Because truthfully, any pantheon, mm-hmm. they're, they're like, if you're like, like a polytheistic pantheon, they're always kind of, and I know I'm speaking to a pagan. They're <laughs> yeah. Little, they're, they're always kind of jerks. But like the Roman gods specifically are like, they're the god, all of them are the god of something and war. Yes. All of them. So like. They can't not be jerks because they all are the mm-hmm. god of war. See, and that's why, like, as a pagan, I always like to say, I don't worship, I honor. Mm-hmm. Because they're assholes. <laughs> like, they are. I'm not going to worship they're an gonna asshole. They're going to do what they want. They're going to do what the hell they want. But, like, that's one thing I do like about those religions, like, as a concept, is, like, their gods are not mm-hmm. perfect. Their gods are, they make mistakes, they do weird things. I mean, that's how we get a lot of our mythology and all the stories. And, like, I, they're they're jerks. They do shitty things. Like, it's... Not that it humanizes them, but it makes them more... It, it makes the stories of them coming down to Earth and, yeah. things and doing things of varying degrees with humans more plausible because they are not these all-powerful mm-hmm. beings that always do things. Which, and with my brain, goes into this whole thing of, like, perfectionism is anti-human. And yeah. a lot of the religions are also kind of like Christianity, where it's like you're we were created in the same, like, vision, same... You know what I mean? Uh, so why would mm-hmm. we be perfect? Or why would we? Ad- yeah. Why would we why- go towards like try to achieve perfection when what we are created from is mm. also not perfect? Like I, I see perfection right. as anti-human because we're human. Yeah. Humans make mistakes. So exactly love that we have free will. We have free- exactly free will. See, this is a TV podcast. Um- <laughs> so back to Bob's Burgers. Yeah, <laughs> lean, lean me, Mom Jean's Revenge Machine is not a bad band name. That's a good band name. I, I, I would see a band like that. I did love when they were like, you're a runaway Tata. I, was, I also wrote down runaway Tata. Bob, though, like, he if he had just blended the concealer better, mm-hmm. I think he would. He was, like, just piling it on. Like, he didn't actually blend it. He just put it on. He just, like, done. put it there. Yeah, but, like, we're like dude. All, everyone being so obsessed with a pimple. I get the dermatologist. Like, I get the dermatologist. I think, I think it was more a commentary on, like, when you get old, these are the things you talk about. And, like, I liked the commentary on it to the point of also it's a high school reunion. A pimple mm. in high school like that would have been the death of you in their, yeah, exactly. in their age. But then you end up an adult at a high school reunion and everybody's like, oh, it's okay. We all get mm-hmm. them. Like, yeah, it's cool. How can we help? Let's party. And then they get them drunk. And I'm like, I like yeah. Drunk Bob. Drunk Bob is funny. Because he's like, I, lo- I want to keep partying, but I should go to my wife. I wrote down, uh, Bob, go after your <laughs> wife. <laughs> and he did not. He did not go after his wife. Uh, Kitty Fight Club is never the solution. No. Let's... Mm, let's not. No. I think you'll agree with me on this one. Okay. I need to see the footage of Megan Mullally singing that song. I mean, yes. I am always the kind of person, like, anytime I watch <laughs> anything that's, like, that's animated voiceover, what have you, I love watching them in the booth. Like, the, when they're actually recording and not... It's so Not fun. like those times where, like, oh, this is when we recorded it. No, you didn't. You recorded it, like, months ago and this is where you have makeup on. <laughs> like... I love seeing those. I love seeing those so much. Because, like, because also you can tell, like, this is when they are recording it. Because I've seen, I've seen videos that, like, I mean, a lot of, like, the Disney, like, the behind the scenes, they'll show, like, oh, the actor is recording their lines. And I'm like, they're mm-hmm. wearing too much makeup. No. But then you see, like, for, like, the Once Musical episode, there's some clips of one of the actors, like, singing, like, that is her singing her heart out and she's having fun with like the director in her ear telling her what to do. And I'm like, this is cute to see. It, it makes me think of the times you see like the Seth MacFarlane videos of him in the mm-hmm. booth, which is very yeah. funny um, because of how many different voices yep. he does. But like just seeing anybody, it just makes me happy mm-hmm. um, because you see the actor acting and you don't get to see that because it's animated. Exactly. And it's just, it's, it's like, behind this it's just the behind it's the so scenes cool. well, that's a, what you don't get to see i hope there's footage of them recording stuff for has hotel because so many of them they're, they're recording it at all different places mm. like a lot of them are new york based and they recorded obviously a couple of years ago at this point and like but like all of i think they said all of them recorded separately 
like the entire cast. Oh wow, and it's too, that's it's hard. hard. And it's that is so much on um, the vocal director Richard Horvitz, which uh, I think is his name. Uh, he's the he was the voice of Zim in Invader Zim, which is like mm-hmm. he's he himself is a phenomenal voice actor, but also the fact of like he is such a good vocal director that he can he knows how to get the best take out of each person, but also he knows what everyone did. So when he's reading with them, he's kind of doing the takes. They are uh, reacting to the right delivery of the line and it's like it's like when it's done so well it's done so well but i would love to see that but i don't think we're ever getting that uh by the time this episode of this podcast is out i am pretty sure we would had our husband hotel special out so if you if you need more husband hotel go find whatever episode that is it'll be a special well yeah it'll say special and then something uh we have it planned we have not recorded it yet though but it's gonna happen it's gonna uh, happen. It's gonna happen soon, and obviously, as you've if you've listened to our other special, those come out a lot sooner to recording than regular episodes. Exactly. So this is just us talking about it now, but you won't hear this until May. May. So yeah, end of May. Yeah. You're welcome for the Hasbin Hotel episode. Speaking of the line to go from there, though, though I wrote down the line, "Enter my Acropolis." See, I wrote down, "Make my yogurt Greek." I went, no, thank you. The fact that that is the line right after that. It's like, no, thank you. <laughs> oh my God. This, whoo. But then at the end too, Linda like telling the kids to, to like, yeah, get it. Like getting the pimple. And I'm like, pull the car over. Mm-hmm. Just pull over. Exactly. My last line is I'll, I'll give, I'll give the Tatas credit that the song, that this song was on beat and in key. Even though it was awful. It was horrible. It was terrible. But it it was a fun time. Right? It it, it was an episode. <laughs> Nothing like Turkey in a can. No, no, it absolutely not. Very very different vibe. Um like, it gave me like it gave me like flashbacks like like watching my ex's band rehearse. Like they oh, were wow. they they were they were fine. Like honestly they they really were fine. It's just more of I had all of the behind the scenes mm-hmm. stuff going on. I'm like just watching bands rehearse and things. I'm like just reminds no matter no matter how good or bad the band is that's rehearsing in the TV show. I'm just like I've watched too much of this in my life. Yeah. Then, I was only dating that person for two years. And like, even on with that though, I wrote down that I'm like, I think, I feel like band practices would be very much like this. And when they're in the basement. Yeah. My, my ex's band, like from, from the times that I watched them rehearse, or I, I saw them rehearse. Like I mostly saw them at shows. I didn't, I usually didn't see rehearsal all that often, but sometimes I did. And it's a lot of like, they, they have, you know, whatever their set is that they're going to rehearse that day. Um, and they did their best to get through it and fix things. And usually they had someone who isn't me listening uh, to make sure that, it, you know, that it's going okay or something is sounding off. Cause it, when they're, when they're playing, they can't always hear everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you do need someone on the outside to be like, okay, I think we need to do more of the bass, less of the drums, more of this, more of the, that, or something's off key or something like that. Like you do need that, that extra set of ears to make sure that everything's okay. But like most, most bands, they, they figure out what they're going to play. And they actually know how to play them as opposed to the Tatas. Yeah, the Tatas were just kind of like, what are we going to go with today? Um, apparently it was Derek D- Dematopoulos. Mm-hmm. And where are my drumsticks? So what did you rate this? I gave this one sevens across the board. Like, right. it's fine. Like, that's usually, that's like my, like, fine, nothing against it episode. Like, it's like, as opposed to if anyone listened to the episode that aired the Monday previous to this one, uh, where I gave an episode fives across the board for once upon a time, because I could skip it, but I admit that it has things that it needs, but I don't need it in my life. Um, sevens is like my, like, it's fine. It is an episode. I'm not super positive about it or super negative. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of there. Like, you didn't have Millie, so you're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so this one gets a 21, which is f- fair, honestly. Anything over a 20 is like, it's fine. Yeah, mine's actually only a point off from yours. Mm-hmm. I gave plot and personal a seven, um, okay. and character an eight, just because. I mean, it's Megan Mullally, I, even though it's Gail, and like Gail's not like overly annoying. Gail is just Gail is Gail. It, I don't mind Gail. Like honestly, for all of the annoying characters, I don't mind her. That might be because she's played by Megan Mullally. I don't know, mm-hmm. but like I truthfully like she's fine. I have like she's she's nowhere near my dislike of Teddy. How did it feel, um, I'm just going off of, like, 
in total. Because uh, I have a 22, I think. I said I think I said that. I'm, mine's a 22. Yeah. But back to, like, just the full episode, uh, not just – I mean, the full podcast episode. How did it feel watching a Thanksgiving episode in March? <laughs> I mean, it's fine. It's – because like I would say, I never, I never put like real world timing and logic mm-hmm. on animated shows, even though you probably, at least spoke with Fosberg and it probably should. But I've like never done, I've like never put any level of continuity or like t- like time equivalency okay. to animated shows. So like the fact that I'm watching a Thanksgiving episode in March. Okay. I watch the Treehouse of Horror episodes year round because I just feel like it. Yeah. So. Halloween's different. Show, you, you throw caution to the wind with, the, with the, with animated shows. Yeah. So, with what you've seen so far, we're just into season four. What is a scenario you would mm-hmm. like to see in Bob's Burgers with these characters? Because mm. you've seen quite a few. I want to see. I want to see the Belchers at a Renaissance Fair. I think that. Oh, hilarious. I want to see that. Oh, we have in fourteen seasons. They haven't done that. No. Interesting. I think that'd be oh, hilarious. That'd be good. That'd be yeah, hilarious. Right? Hey, Bob's Burgers writers. <laughs> It'd be really cool to see how each would dress up, though, because, like, I feel like Louise would look like a, just a little assassin. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, Bob could probably go for, like, the old-fashioned, like, in-person, the mm-hmm. way he would dress. Linda would go full out, like, Elvish, I feel. Probably. I think Jean would be, like, a friar situation. I don't know why. Yes. And Tina, something with horses. Something with horses. Yeah. Like, I could see her doing, like, a centaur just for shit, like, because it's Tina. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so Bob's Burgers writers, hey, do you want to write that or hire one of us to write it, perhaps? Oh, that'd be a fun project. If only. I can't screen write, no, let, let, alone, let alone for animation. Just, just, uh, we have the knowledge, just not the skill. Exactly. I can tell you what the scenarios can be. You do the words. <laughs> oh, what if Bob could cook at a run fair? Oh, that'd be good. You have him with the turkey legs. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Because he loves turkey. Mm-hmm. So, like, oh. He'd yep. probably still try he to does, come up with he a... He does love turkey. He'd still probably try to want to come up with a burger, though. Um, man, that'd be awesome. Bob's Burgers, please hear us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for listening. Join us next time when we discuss Once Upon a Time, Episode 207, Child of the Moon. Don't forget to like, rate, and follow the podcast wherever you listen so you can be notified every time we publish a new episode. And follow us at O-B-D-Y-K underscore pod on Instagram and TikTok. This has been an episode of OK, But Did You Know? A TV and media podcast. It was hosted by Katie and Lauren and edited by Katie.